Hey, before you even start taping and finishing drywall, you need to do a lot of prep work. I covered that in a separate video. Told you all about things like torn brown paper, screws sticking out, broken corners, gaps, and so on. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pre-fill all these defects and get it ready for taping. We're gonna do that right after this. Hey, what I'm gonna do is walk you through how to do the pre-filling because it sounds really simple, but there's a little bit to it. Like we're gonna show you things like how to pre-fill gaps like this, gaps in angles, broken corners and so on. I'm gonna show you that, but first let me explain to you why you need to do pre-filling. What I've done is drawn up a little mock-up. So imagine this is two pieces of drywall coming over meeting each other with a big gap in the middle. Let's say this is an eighth of an inch or more because generally that's what you need to pre-fill. Now the green represents the joint tape if you were to just tape this without pre-filling. And the black would be the thickness of the mud on the back of that joint tape. So you see that this whole area here is just a void. So it's not got much strength to it. So you want to come through and pre-fill it first and we just want to basically get as much mud in there as we can. Now that's all a nice solid piece. Our joint tape lays on top. It's a lot stronger. So I'm going to show you how we're going to mix up some mud and do that next. All right. So what I'm going to do is mix up some 45 minute mud in my level five uh, pan here. If you guys happen to need tools, yes, I'm a level five affiliate but I also can get you 10% off of any of these tools. I'll put a link in the description right below this video. That'll help save you some money and it helps me. I earn a small commission on it. What we're going to use is this 45 minute fast setting joint compound. We in the trade tend to call it hot mud because it actually heats up. When you mix it with water, it creates an exothermic reaction, which means it creates heat and it starts hardening. This one will give us 45 minutes of working time before it starts thickening up too much to use it. And then it takes about an hour before it's fully set up and we could actually start taping and coating right after that. Now you can also use Durabond. I use this mud like this as fast set, light. Any, any of these uh, easy sand muds, they sand a lot easier than Durabond. And actually in our area, the only place I can get Durabond is True Value. This works just fine. It does basically exactly the same thing. So we're just going to mix up a little mud. Now, here's a tip for you. When you mix up your hot mud, you want to be sure and use this Lipton Green Iced Tea Clear Formula. Now this is water, plain water. Now I've got a bucket of water here. Why do I have to use this water? If you use contaminated water that you washed up other batches of mud in, hot mud especially, it will often make your hot mud set up weirdly. It can set up too fast. It can set up in lumps. So you want to use clean water. So I just put some in this empty jug here and we're going to mix up a fair amount. So we'll start with about this much water. We'll take and dump some powder in. Now, if you'll come over here and show them how I dump this in here, because what I do is I dump it in until the water kind of starts disappearing. You'll see it's kind of disappearing, but there's still some seeping up. So I'm going to add a little bit more, usually about that much. Now we're going to mix it up and I'm going to use this drill with an egg beater because it's really a simple way to do this. Go on a low speed. Let's see which one's low here. There, and just start out nice and slow. You see the, <clears throat> the water coming back up through there. I don't have enough powder in there, but that's okay. We'll stir it a little bit and just keep adding. And I usually like to put enough in there to, again, cover up most of the water and a little bit more. 
can see I've got quite a bit of water in here, so it's going to take one more to fill that up. And we should be pretty close now. Now that I got that stirred in, I can switch to higher speed. And it mixes up like cake batter. Doesn't taste near as good though. I tried it once and <laughs> ah, tastes like mud. Now a little, another little tip. If you keep your hot mud next to your water, it's really a good idea put the lid on because if you splash water in there it'll harden a lump in there and you don't want that then to clean this up we just tap the excess off stick it in the bucket of water give it a couple spins I usually shake it like that and look that clean as a whistle all right now you'll notice this is fairly thick you want it to be fairly thick because we're trying to fill some gaps and sometimes you'll see we're going to fill a gap of an angle inside angle there's no backing in there so if you put thin in there it's going to droop out it's going to run back in the wall or something so you want it to be fairly thick but note that this often thickens up as you go so you don't want to start out too thick so the first thing we're going to work on is this big crack right here now, first of all, I didn't hang this job. The homeowner did. He actually did a pretty dang good job, but he's got some gaps like this and it happens. Pretty much every drywall job is gonna have some. Now, in this close-up illustration I'm gonna show you here with the side lighting, you can see that there's also a lot of times a little curled edge on this paper and that's because of the way it was cut and that's sticking out a little bit. That's gonna make you have to put mud on thicker and all. So what I like to do is just take like the blunt end of my knife here and just run across it and mash it down. Now your other option is you could, I don't have one with me, but you could take a utility knife and just cut that off. But this works pretty good to just mash it back in. And then I'm gonna check it. Make sure there's no screws sticking out. Then we're just going to fill it full of mud. I'm doing this backwards, so I'm going to move over to the other side. I'm not. <laughs> okay, I run this this way normally. So we're just using a six inch knife because we're just trying to fill that in. And we're trying to mash it back in there. So it fills it up like in that illustration. Okay, here we have an inside angle. That's a pretty dang big gap. Now, if it gets this big, sometimes what I do is I spray foam it and let it dry. And then I come back with my knife and just cut it off like that. I don't have spray foam today, but this mud's thick enough. We should be able to just do similar. So we're getting it mashed back in there all across here. And we just take and run our knife through here. But when you're using this six inch knife, you notice how this is a 90 degree right here. So you want to square that up. Let me clean that out for you. Square that up so it fits in there so that you're not, you're not turning your knife like this. It's not going to clean it out as well. If you go like that, you're going to leave a rounded corner. So square it up. Wipe it across. You can see up close, it's pretty much filled in. That's good enough. That's gonna give you some backing for your joint tape. Okay, we're in the closet here where there's quite a few little defects. So we're gonna show you, it's probably echoing a little bit, but we'll get over it. So the first thing I wanna show you is this corner. If you look at it and you push on it, you can see it's loose. That's because it's busted. So what you want to do is cut that out. Now I went to look for my utility knife. We're shooting videos. I couldn't see it real quickly. So I'm just going to show you my alternative way, which is we're just going to use the edge of the knife here and cut through the paper, peel that out. And then you want to kind of move anything that's really loose. And I threw that right in my mud <laughs> like an amateur so just loosen get all that loose crumbly stuff out of there kind of same with this one 
and then we just want to pre-fill these the same way. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre-fill this at the same time. Okay, here we have a broken chunk of rock that's broken off, but it's mostly solid. All the crumblies are gone. So we're just gonna fill it. Okay, you notice it's not super pretty. There's kind of like scratches. It's a little rough looking. That doesn't matter. We're just trying to give it a solid fill in here so that the joint tape has something to stick to and then all that's going to hide anyway so just get it filled in okay so what we have on this side of the closet is we have a recessed edge butting up to a non-recessed edge and it makes for a nasty looking joint right here if i put my knife on it you can see it looks pretty nasty it's got just it doesn't come out very good and a lot of people wonder how do you tape that? Do you let the tape roll over in there and mash it in? And what, you know, it's kind of confusing. Well, we're just going to pre-fill it. So I'm going to use my bigger knife. So the same thing as before, if we have a rolled edge, just kind of, I like to mash it down. Remember, everything should be sound and solid. So if it's loose and floppy, you get rid of that. So we finish mashing everything down and then we will just go ahead and pre-fill it. Okay, so you can see in the picture, it's pretty nasty, but we're just gonna simply, you could do this with probably an eight or a 10. I went ahead and got my 12 because I wasn't sure how bad it was. We just wanna spread a coat of mud on the whole thing. And wipe it off pretty tight you're not trying to coat it you're trying to fill it okay one last question you might have is do you need to go around and fill in all these recesses well if they don't have a crack in it no this one has a little bit so you could pre-fill it but if it's an generally it's eighth of an inch or wider that you need to pre-fill. Otherwise, if it's just a recessed edge against a recessed edge, taping and coating will take care of that. We have a recessed edge here up against a non-recessed edge. So it tends to leave a... That definitely clipped the mic. cords in better <laughs> hey if you want to increase your learning power a thousand percent be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up after you subscribe look for that bell click the bell and you'll get notified of all the videos and by hitting that thumbs up you'll really help our channel get shown more because that's how YouTube determines who gets shown the most thanks a lot so there you go, pre-filling 101. I hope that helped you out. If you got any questions or if you like this video, be sure and comment. Comments make my YouTube video or my videos get shown more by YouTube and I really appreciate it. That and a big old thumbs up. Hey, I look forward to seeing you on the next video and helping you out with your project. Until then, everybody take care.